diabetes. Diabetes occur when the blood sugar is too high. Diabetes should be handled because if not, it'll lead to risk such as diabetic neuropathy, the damage of the nerves, nephropathy, the kidney disease, and retinopathy, the damage of eyes which cause vision impairment. There are type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and the diagnosis is symptoms plus random blood glucose in vein is over 11.1 millimole per liter. So bo most people, 90% are type 2. Let's compare between this type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes composed of 10% of total diabetes population. It acts on younger people like teenagers or younger adults. It is symptomatic, so the patient pee a lot, is thirsty, tired, weightless, and there's possible ketosis. So, as you can see in this picture from Wikipedia, the autoimmune attack uh, our own cell in type 1 diabetes. So this autoimmune destruction of beta cell in Langer Hans isolate in pancreas. So there's an absolute insulin deficiency in our body. It is me attacking myself. Uh, in contrast, type 2 diabetes uh, composes 90% of total diabetes population. So the person is usually obese, so lifestyle matters. Uh, the person is mainly 40 years or older, asymptomatic. Yep, so um, the cause is like keep eating too much chocolate or sugar and the insulin keeps being released and so the sense is becoming loud. Let's talk about the hormones that that matters. So there are insulin, glucagon, that is working reciprocally to control the blood sugar. They are doing like kind of negative feedback uh, among themselves. So we have an insulin. Uh, insulin is secreted by beta cell of island of Langerhans. So when blood glucose level is too high, the insulin comes and work. Insulin removes glucose from blood uh, and then it take it to, to into muscle or fat cell and store the nutrients. It's called cellular uptake. So it is storing the carbohydrate. Whereas glucagon is secreted by alpha cell in pancreas. So when blood glucose level is low, glucagon comes, acts on liver, and makes uh, gluconeogenesis and gluconeolysis, which is making the sh blood sugar level up. Uh, it is antagonizer of insulin. Also, exercise, stress, high protein meal also in stimulate uh, glucagon release. We have other hormone called incretin. It is also known as uh, GLP-1 and GIP. So it is secreted from small intestine when there is food. It acts on the pancreas beta cells and increase insulin level. Uh, incretin plays important role in balance glucose level after eating. So when you eat, there's food in our stomach uh, and our small intestine. So when incretin detects food, uh, insulin is being released and the beta cell in pancreas, the number rises. And it suppresses glucagon secretion and increases gastric empty time. Also, there is a term called hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. Hypoglycemia means there is too low sugar in blood. The blood glucose level is less than 4 millimole per liter. The symptoms include tremor, sweating, hunger, and dizziness. When managing hypoglycemia patients with treatment, we check the blood glucose level in 50 minutes. It is important. And there's a term called hyperglycemia. This is in contrast. So there's too much sugar in blood. The symptoms include the breath odor, shortness of breath, dry mouth, weakness, and abdominal pain. Let's check out the drug treatment for diabetes too. So there are many drugs, and then each drug acts differently on weight. So for example, the medicine that causes weight loss is SGLT2 inhibitor, 
NGLP1 receptor antagonist. Uh, weight neutral or less is metformin. Weight neutral is DPP4 inhibitor. The weight gain is sulfonylureas and insulin. So we can see the first line is metformin, and second line is sulfonylureas, sec, um, DPP4 inhibitor, or SGLT2 inhibitor. Uh, firstly, the metformin is the first line, which acts on the liver, and it prevents glucose synthesis. So glucose output decreases uh, coming outside of the liver. Uh, when using metformin, uh, please monitor um, hemoglobin A1c in 3 months and adjust it if it is not effective. For example, uh, hiring the dose or changing or adding the other medicine into metformin. Second line, sulfonylureas, glyclazide, glyampyride, glipizide, and glibenclamide. The sulfonylureas is the second line. Uh, sulfonylureas increase the insulin secretion, traps down HP1AC, more than DPP4, but the disadvantage is weight gain. Also, um, note that especially glyclazide has neutral effect on weight, so it is considered best among the best, better than other sulfonylurea drugs such as glymipride, glipizide, or glibenclamide. So the others are causing the weight gain, but glyclazide is special, so it is doing the neutral effect on weight. We have DPP4 inhibitor for the second line. It is saxividali, yeah, saxagliptin, cetagliptin, avildagliptin alloglyptin, and linagliptin. So, DPP4 enzymes rapidly deactivates GLP-1 and GIP, uh, which is insulin, but in creatine, but related with insulin. But DPP-4 inhibitor blocks DPP-4, so negative negative is positive. So, in creatine hormone rises, uh, so the glucagon secretion decreases. Let's talk about SGLT2 inhibitor. Uh, is a second line uh, to dapagliflozin and empagliflozin. So SGLT2 transporter is located in this proximal tubule, and it is responsible for 90% of glucagon reabsorption. Uh, so when this transporter is inhibited, 90% of glucagon glucose is excreted out of urine. So advantage is the weight loss by 3 kg. Disadvantage is urinary tract infection or, so, or vaginal thrush. So people who have vaginal thrush or the infection, um, it is recommended not to use SGLT2 inhibitor. Use other drug instead. Let's talk about the third line. So the third line includes GLP-1 receptor antagonist, insulin, TZD and alcarbose. So TZD, thiazolidinone, is PPAR gamma receptor. It acts on this. And alcarbose, um, it slows food digestion and helps keeping blood sugar level moderate after the meals. So let's talk about the third line insulin regimen. Uh, we have MDI which is multiple day injection, we have mixed insulin, we have basal insulin. So some acts on type 1 diabetes, some acts on type 2 diabetes, and it is like not actually the third line, but it is kind of mixed. MDI, multiple daily injection for type 1 diabetes. It uses both rapid acting and long acting. Um, as you can see, it is combination, and the picture reference is from Leahy, 2012. It mimics pancreas daily insulin release. Advantage is flexible. MDI insulin adjusts quite fast to the meal and the patient can skip meals. Its advantage is 4 to 5 injections a day and also include several blood glucose level testing. So it may increase the confusion. Premixed is a cloudy and it is mixed used for type 2 diabetes and diabetes mellitus in pregnancy. Advantage is just one or two times a day 
breakfast and dinner, you can just use it once. It's also fine. Disadvantage is less flexibility when to eat the food. Basal insulin is a long acting and single dose for type 2 diabetes. Advantage is only one. Disadvantage is it is often suboptimal glucose control, so there's risk of hypoglycemia. Basal insulin. 